this time, I would like to introduce our governor of the great Commonwealth of Massachusetts to deliver some remarks, a friend of veterans, a friend of families, and a leader of all who call Massachusetts home, our governor, Charles D. Baker. Thank you, Secretary Urena. And thank you all for being here. But most importantly, thank you to the men and women who wear the uniform and serve our country and their families and keep us safe and keep us free. And today, especially, on behalf of the people of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, I especially want to thank remember and honor those veterans who served this nation and saved the world in World War II and their families. God bless each and every one of you who are here today, who are still alive, and those who have passed during or since that monumental conflict. Thank you. There's a very simple line I heard one time that for me says it all with respect to the work and the sacrifice that was made on behalf of this country in World War II. All gave some, some gave all. Not since has there ever been a conflict in which virtually every member of this country was engaged one way or another in fighting the evil that sought to tear down freedom and change the course of history. Now I'm enough of an historian to know that the result of World War II was very much in doubt at many points throughout that conflict. In hindsight, everyone looks back on that time and says, well, of course, the good guys would win. God was on our side. But if you talk to anybody who was involved in those conflicts, or you talk to my dad, who's a World War II history buff, or you read any of the history of the many elements of that conflict over the course of that four and a half years. These were battles, and this was a war for which the outcome was constantly in doubt. And in the end, it was the courage, the bravery, the grit of the men and women who fought with the Allied forces, despite in many cases being outmanned and outmachined, who turned the tide. It was an extraordinary display at an extraordinary time. And it's important that we all take moments like this to recognize the significance of what was accomplished and to honor those and their families who saved our freedom. This was not a skirmish. This was not a theater. This was a fight across an entire globe about a way of life. And the fight was against an enemy that was wealthy, 
prepared and committed to do whatever it took to win. And all of us who have come since then are the beneficiaries of the individual acts, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of them, that were delivered one day at a time, one person at a time, one decision at a time, one encounter at a time, to turn the tide and win that war. You know, I read a book a few years ago. It was called Flags of Our Fathers. It was written by a man by the name of Jim Bradley, who knew that his father had had something to do with World War II, but he didn't know what. And every couple of years, the phone would ring, and it would be some reporter from some place calling, looking for his dad. And his dad would always say, just tell him I'm not around. Tell him I'm golfing, even though his father had never picked up a club. <laughs> and after his father died, they were sifting through his papers. And in a closet, in the back of the closet, he found a shoebox. And inside that shoebox were a series of medals, including the Navy Cross, that had been awarded to his dad, who was a combat medic on Iwo Jima. And he was not just any combat medic. He was one of the men in perhaps the most famous military picture of that entire war the raising of the flag on Mount Suribachi. His dad never spoke of it. Those phone calls that came every few years were from reporters who were trying to find the James Bradley, who was part of the group that raised that flag. And the reason his dad never spoke of it was because he always said to his kids, the real heroes they never came home. They were in those graveyards that John and Joe talked so eloquently about, far from home. Seventy years ago, this war ended. And it is crucially important for us as a country for us as a state, and for all of us as a community, that we remember the valor and the sacrifice that was made by this greatest generation so that we would all have an opportunity to remain free. You set the standard of which all others will be measured, and gave us a level of effort and a sense of patriotism to which we can all aspire. This is a great country. This is a great state filled with wonderful, magnificent, and at times flawed people. But we owe our freedom to the men and women who wear that uniform. And it's critical that we never, ever forget that and that we take opportunities, whenever they present themselves, to thank them, like today, for all they've done. As your governor, I just want to say how grateful I am to serve, but more especially, how grateful I am to all of you. Thank you very much. a proclamation, it has a lot of whereases in it, and I'm not going to read them all to you. I'm just going to read the now therefore part, because that's the close. 
Now therefore, I, Charles D. Baker, Governor of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, do hereby proclaim November 2015 to be World War II Veterans Appreciation Month and urge all of the citizens of the Commonwealth to take cognizance of this event and participate fittingly, as you have today, in its observance. Thank you very much, and God bless you all.